Welcome to the HJ Talks About Abuse podcast, the podcast where we talk about sexual abuse cases in the hope that it will assist listeners in openly discussing topics which have been ignored for too long. This podcast is brought to you by the abuse team at Hugh James. We are lawyers, so we tend to speak about the legal aspects of abuse cases, but we aren't too shy to speak up about the broader issues faced by survivors of sexual abuse too. We hope that you find it interesting, but more than that, if you are a survivor of sexual abuse, we hope that you find our discussion empowering. Hello, my name is Alan Collins. I am the partner who heads up the abuse team at Hugh James. Welcome to this week's podcast, and I am joined by my colleague, Hannah Hodgson. Hi, Hannah. Hi, Alan. Thanks for having me. Not at all. Thanks for having me. Welcome to our podcast. And as you know, if you have listened to us before, these podcasts do deal with very sensitive subjects and in particular, child sexual abuse and sexual abuse generally. So if those are issues that you find particularly upsetting, now's the time to stop listening to this podcast and go off and make yourself a cup of tea or do something else. But if that is not the case, please do stay with us. And I hope you find this week's podcast interesting. And um, before I get underway with this week's podcast, I'll just make the point that we always welcome feedback from you. And so if you have any ideas or suggestions for a future podcast, then please do tell us. Please do get in touch. And also, of course, you can subscribe and you will receive podcast each week and you don't have to go looking for it so I know some of you subscribe and some of you don't and I am conscious through my own efforts or ineffectual efforts that sometimes it's difficult to appreciate that you can always subscribe to podcasts such as these so please do subscribe anyway enough of the commercial break stuff and let's move on to this podcast and this podcast is Hannah's idea and it's all about abuse in Hollywood and it is going to focus on the She Said movie which is all about Harvey Weinstein and Harvey Weinstein is in the news again because he is on trial I'm pretty sure in Los Angeles correct me if I'm wrong Hannah pretty sure it's Los Angeles in respect of more sexual abuse allegations and of course he was convicted a while back in another court in New York for serious sexual abuse allegations and now he's facing his second trial. I think it's right to make the point at the outset. It's my understanding that he disputes these um, allegations and considers himself innocent and I also understand that he has been granted leave to appeal in respect of the New York trial. So regardless of what happens it's quite clear that this is uh, an ongoing story, if I can put it like that. But I'm now going to hand over to Hannah and get you, Hannah, to give us a bit of background so that we can understand what the She Said movie is all about. Yeah, well, that's right, Alan. So um, the recent release of, of the film, She Said, has provided us with an imperative account of the Harvey Weinstein abuse, and it's recently brought a lot of attention to the subject. So really where the movie has come from. Five years ago in 2017, the New York Times brought to light the sexual abuse that has been alleged by the very famous and well-known film producer Harvey Weinstein. And what has been accused of him is subjecting a lot of his co-workers, many of who are very famous and high-profile actors, to sexual assaults. And a lot of them came forward And really, that's what the film focuses on. And the perspective the film takes is following the two New York journalists that are looking into the abuse. um, And they're sort of following the trial, following all the allegations. And as the film progresses, more and more details of the abuse come out. And I think what's really interesting about the film and what it's been praised for is that What it shows is the victims themselves coming forward and reporting the incidents, which is not often shown, you know, through films of this sort of nature. It's usually someone else reporting or or the abuse coming out in another sort of way. And 
really the film centred goal and the importance of the film was empathising the survivors using their own voices to come forward and report sexual assault that they've been victim to. Well, that's interesting because we had very recently in another podcast the use of survivors' voices as part of a, a piece of art. And we spoke in that podcast to the artists about the use of survivors in her artwork. And I think the survivors provided details of where their abuse had taken place. And then photographs were taken of the locations. And you had those photographs um, displayed. And then another part of the artwork was the arms and hands of the um, survivors sort of effectively reaching out. And that is powerful because as the viewer or the listener or the outsider looking in on all of this, you then get that real sense of these are real human beings that I can relate to. Yeah. Rather than being the complete outsider who sort of has perhaps a certain level, maybe some sympathy or maybe yeah. some empathy. Yeah. Whereas I think what you're talking about goes a lot further. You sort of cross the Rubicon, as it were, and briefly inhabit the world of the survivor. Yeah, and I think that's exactly what the film she said set out to do. It really was setting out to embody the act in talking and listening through conversations and really symbolising the importance of that and speaking up about sexual abuse. And importantly, it also encouraged the Me Too movement. And that was actually set up before the film. But since the film has come out, we have seen that social movement against sexual abuse and sexual harassment and rape culture really go viral and it has taken off on social media which has been really important actually to come out of the film which is what I think they set out to do and it it has really encouraged victims and survivors to come out and speak about their own experiences. Yes and we're living in a very interesting time aren't we because today we've got the World Cup in Qatar and there's been this controversy about displays of protest Mm. on the part of, say, um, English, Welsh footballers in respect of the culture in Mm. Qatar, which, Mm. how can I put it, rightly or wrongly, is different to what we expect here. And, you know, there's claims of, you know, politics, hypocrisy, that making gestures or empty gestures or they're meaningless gestures, where there's others who are saying it's very important that we are not mute, but we do object. And there's others are saying, well, it's totally inadequate. But, you know, there's those who argue that the English team shouldn't have gone to Qatar. Yeah. You know, the point is being made that yeah. if you object to any form of discrimination, for example, discrimination against women or other people, then you shouldn't go to Qatar. So there's lots of arguments. And I don't think it's necessary for you or I to say which is right and which is wrong. I think the yeah. point that we can perhaps make is, well, actually, it might be a good thing that the, these conversations are taking place because here yeah, we are. Definitely. It's 2022, 21st century. And one would have thought, are we learning? Are yeah. we learning from survivors and victims good question i think i think it's a very pertinent question and from what you're talking about as a result of this film i think for me it sort of says truth you know here we are 21st century and we haven't have to have to have these conversations but then another level i'm thinking no it's good it's good maybe it's healthy maybe things will change I definitely agree. I think it's all relevant. And I think what it all boils down to is really, as you said, Alan, it's sad. It's the 21st century and we're still having to discuss these issues. And it's definitely all relevant and and does all tie together. But as you said, it it is good that we are having conversations about it. And it's good that we have films such as she said coming out and really embodying that, how important it is to have these conversations. Yeah. And if you're a victim or survivor and you haven't disclosed, do you think they can take any comfort from a film such as this? Yeah, I definitely think they can, Alan. I mean, this film in particular focuses on a very, you know, high-powered individual, a man of power in the entertainment industry. And I think 
what is really good about this film is you know, you often find that people in a position of power sadly sometimes feel that they can use that position to abuse people because they may feel that they are able to get away with it more. Yeah. Maybe maybe because they can bribe their victims or they can promise things or, you know, threaten them in ways that maybe people in a position of power couldn't do. So I think this what this film does is it really shows that you will be believed even against people like that and it really does encourage survivors to come forward and speak about it where they may have felt that they wouldn't have been believed before yeah and i think going back to podcasts that we put on the other week featuring the artwork of dana leslie in dundee it's something visual live does in my experience reach further than just a film or story but just tells a story so to speak it's finding that trick that switches the light on in the brain so that you actually walk away having learned something and it stays with you yeah i agree very interesting well i'm sure that this is a particular quote unquote story that we will be coming back to in due course because quite clearly there's ongoing criminal litigation in the United States and I'm sure regardless of what happens there's going to be more to learn and to understand so on that note thank you Hannah and as always thank you for listening and a little reminder about the commercial break please subscribe if you want to of course and please do always get in touch We always like to hear from those who tune in to our podcast. Until next time, it's goodbye from Hannah and it's goodbye from me. Goodbye, everyone. Thanks, Alan. Thank you for listening to this episode of HJ Talks About Abuse. You can subscribe to our podcast on iTunes, Spotify or your favourite podcast player. If you'd like to speak to us about something you've heard today, we'd love to hear from you. Email us at aboutabuse at hjtalks.co.uk